It's Keep through that prism that I thought there was a really interesting uh, op-ed in the Washington Post, um, your publication, uh, three retired general officers, uh, and part of that op-ed is, quote, in short, we are chilled to our bones at the thought of a coup succeeding next time, the potential for a total breakdown of the chain of command along partisan lines from to the top of the chain <laughs> to the squad level is significant and should, an or should another insurrection occur. The idea of rogue units organizing among themselves to support the, quote, rightful commander-in-chief cannot be dismissed. Uh, that's chilling, to say the least. Is that the moment that the country is actually in right now? I mean, that's chilling, and I think there are a lot of people who are concerned about what this means for future elections and what sort of groundwork, I guess we could say, was laid, you know, in 2020 and... A state of emergency in Colorado, with thousands of people fleeing their homes as two fast-growing wildfires fueled by hurricane-force winds destroyed hundreds of homes. More than 17,000 people are still without power across the state. CNN's Lucy Kavanaugh live in Denver with more. Lucy? John, this has been absolutely catastrophic and devastating for Colorado. This is already being described as the most destructive wildfire in Colorado history. Rolling Stone just published this incredibly frightening piece titled, The Fuse Has Been Blown and the Doomsday Glacier is Coming for Us All, which, yikes. It's about a huge glacier in the western Antarctic that's the size of the state of Florida. That glacier, known as Thwaites, uh, is basically holding back enough ice to raise sea level around the world by 10 feet. A new study found that the ice shelf holding that ice in place could be gone in less than a decade. In our Earth Matters series, this holiday season is bringing unusually warm temperatures for many Americans. Extreme weather is gripping much of the country, shattering records, stunning climatologists. One shocking example, an area in southern Alaska hit 67 degrees on Sunday. Alaska, I said, setting a record for the warmest December day ever recorded there. It was warmer there than in Southern California that same day. CNN chief climate correspondent Bill Weir joins us now live in Bill, Alaska, experiencing very high temperatures this month, higher than many experts thought was even possible for this time of year. What's going on? This was so alarming, Jake, that, you know, scientists, meteorologists, climatologists had to do a double take. But fortunately, there were weather balloons going off at the same time. A, a thermometer at a tidal gauge in Kodiak, Alaska, measured 67 degrees. It shattered the all-time uh, record before. And at the same time, bizarrely, in Nome, Alaska, they were getting dumped on with inches of rain and freezing rain and then 70-mile-an-hour winds. Uh, it's... You don't even have to leave Alaska to see the dichotomy of a changing climate where it's too much moisture at once in some places, not enough in others, way too cold in the strangest places, warmer in others. And you're seeing that around the globe. Yeah, because it's, the... it's not just Alaska that's seeing this extreme weather. California, the Pacific Northwest are seeing record cold temperatures. Is that related? The record warm temperatures in Alaska, record cold temperatures in California and the Pacific Northwest? Yeah, so let's put up this map. Uh, they're, they've got the big H, that's high pressure, that's warm air, that's moist air, and it's coming way up into the Gulf of Alaska. Now, normally, the jet stream is supposed to hold that down like a, like a belt around the top of the planet. It keeps the cold air up at the North Pole where it belongs, and everybody else gradually gets warmer towards the equator. But now we're seeing this wobble. Climatologists are still trying to figure out exactly the cause of this and the correlations but it wobbles, and so you, sometimes you get a cold snap in Texas we saw last year, or what you're seeing now, where half of Alaska is baked. No, no, no pun intended. Right, and, and Greenland's highest peak got rain instead of snow for the first time ever this year. Parts of Hawaii got snow. So is extreme weather across the globe because of climate change, is this now our new reality? Yes, absolutely. It is. And it's just a question of how bad it gets uh, from here. I actually happen to be uh, in Greenland this summer, and it's melting at such tremendous rates. They're building a billion-dollar seawall around Charleston, for example, to protect against this uh, ever-increasing, rap more rapid sea level rise. Uh, and I was in Hawaii actually shooting a, a story when it snowed on the top of uh, the tallest peak in Hawaii there, which is actually higher than the tallest ski area in Colorado, so they do, have, they do get snow. That's not as bizarre. But they're also getting these rain bombs in, in the paradise of Hawaii. And so, again, you're seeing this. The Sierra is 17 feet of snow uh, in a week, but still not enough to cure the drought that's happening in the Colorado River. Incredible that there's still so much inaction 
at blah, 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 as, as Greta puts it. The data shows Alaska is warming faster than any other state in the U.S., clearly no longer a problem just in the future. What's it going to take for governments, for the public, for society to act now to stop this before it gets, you know, in, in uh, habitable, uninhabitable? Yeah. You know, that's the gazillion dollar question, Jake. I mean, what is it going to take? Uh, there's this new allegory out from Adam McKay called Don't Look Up, and it's in which a meteor is smashing towards Earth. Everybody knows it. And there's a moment in the film where you can actually see it in the sky, but it doesn't change the minds of those who decided to look down. And we're seeing that played out with the pandemic, uh, as, as it were, right now. So it's troubling. And, and even in Alaska, look at the politics. That's a petro state. They live on that pipeline, which ironically, due to melting permafrost and these big debris fields underground shifting, is actually endangering the Alaska's oil pipeline. Bill Lear, you've done such important uh, reporting uh, for CNN and for our show uh, this year on this incredibly important subject. Thank you so much. I, I know we're going to have you on the show a lot more in 2022. I hope there's some good news, though. Uh, uh, amen to that, Jake, and thanks for caring about this story.